All right, so next, the next quantity you're going to be dealing with, velocity. Somebody give me a definition for velocity. Speed. Not speed. Velocity and speed are not the same thing. So that's the first not definition, which I like not definitions. Not, not definitions are good. Yeah? Not change in acceleration. I like the word change, I guess. Change is good, but it's not change in acceleration. All right, so it's a change in position, right? And I'm going to say it's a rate of change because the word rate incorporates the, uh, the idea of time. Ugh, yuck. All right, so the rate of change of displacement. All right, and this is, and, and so, um, uh, so the rate of change of displacement, the rate of change of motion, so the time rate of change. And so, again, this rate in, in, uh, would indicate that it has something to do with time. So in, oh, that's what I wanted to put down there, I forgot. And again, ve uh, velocity is, is a vector. I'm just going to keep. Keep harping on these things that are vectors and keep reinforcing them. All right, so velocity, uh, in terms of, in terms of uh, other quantities that we're familiar with, uh, is simply the displacement divided by time. All right, that's our fundamental definition for, for velocity. I'm going to write it in physics symbol language, which is delta x, vector delta x, over delta t. And so that's how you'll see it written in your book and most other places. <clears throat> All right. Now this delta x thing and this delta t thing, I just want to go a little bit further and, and show you what I'm actually meaning when I'm writing those deltas. Deltas is a difference. That's what represents a difference. So typically what we write is something like this. xf minus x, and, ooh, I should stick with what your book says. I got to remember. You can do F's and O's and I's. Um, we're going to do the final position of something. So you can imagine that you have, uh, just like in our, our previous example, we had a person that was walking the final position of that person, which we'll just say is X divided by X naught, X zero, X sub zero, which is the initial position, divided by the time difference. All right. In your book, you'll see zeros. Um, and then no subscript on what we usually refer to as the final. And this entire thing is a vector. All right, so delta x is just a, it's a, diff, a vector difference. Delta t is the difference in time, or the time duration. Right? I'm being ultra specific. In SI, what are the units for this thing? All right, so displacement has the units of meter. Time has the units of second. And so that's our, our unit. All right. All right, so that's what we're going to be dealing with when with velocity. Now, I want to I want to take a moment to sort of break down the different types of velocity that you're going to be that you might see. Um, the first type that you're going to see most commonly is the average velocity. All right, and that's the velocity that we just defined. All right, uh, what, what I just wrote up there with delta x divided by delta t, that's the velocity, that's the average velocity, technically speaking. And that's the average over some amount of time, some time period. All right, so that's the average velocity. And that's typically what you're going to deal with. And so let's just do a really quick example of calculating the average velocity. I like rockets, so let's do a rocket example. All right, so a rocket. Um, this is sort of a pretty rough example. But a rocket uh, usually, um, let's see. So a rocket um, is launched 
from a rocket launching pad. I can, so it travels. Uh, to so uh, depending on the rocket you're using, they could go to a variety of heights. And we're just going to sort of pull one out of thin air. Uh, it travels to about 500,000 meters above the surface. And that trip uh, that takes about eight minutes. All right, so the question is that I, the, the question that I'm asking then is, all right, what's the average average velocity? <clears throat> all right, now in this in this case we're we're studying now. If we'll go back. This this whole chapter is 1D motion, so we're going to assume that the rocket just goes straight up, doesn't turn left or right, or doesn't do anything crazy like that. It's just going to go straight up, so it's going in a straight line, um, and so all the motion is going towards the upwards direction. So in order to calculate that, I need to know a couple different things. I need to know the duration of the flight, which is eight minutes. So I'm going to write. In general, you'll not see delta t written. I wrote it here just for uh, posterity, just to make it clear. Delta t is what we're dealing with, a time duration. Now we're just going to write it as t because we're lazy and we don't want to write the delta symbol more than we have to. The total duration of the flight is eight minutes. Um, and since we're working in SI units, we should do a quick conversion. So I'm going to convert that to seconds. All right, so if I do that multiplication, I get 480 seconds. That's how long it takes to get up to the altitude that I'm, that I'm heading, the rocket's heading. I need to know the initial position of the rocket. My, once again, I'm hitting the button. <coughs> and then I also need to know the final position of the rocket, just x. All right, so the final position of the rocket is 500,000 meters. What's the initial position? Right, zero. All right, so that's really easy. <clears throat> all right, so that's all the information I know, need to know to solve this problem. And I write it out in a list like this, okay, because I'm trying to instill in you sort of good habits to get into when you're solving these problems. Some problems you'll have, it's very obvious what everything is, and it won't be hard to figure out the starting position zero, and you'll be able to go and just plug things in right away. Some problems it won't be so obvious, and it helps to make a little list. All right, so that's, that's the stuff that we have to do in this problem. So now I can just go ahead and y grab my equation, which I know is x minus x initial divided by time is equal to my velocity. All right, now remember velocity is a vector, so we need to include a direction here at the end. Um, but since we're in 1D land, that direction should be pretty easy to figure out. If I do the calculation, I have 500,000 meters divided by 480 seconds. <clears throat> So the average velocity then is 1,040 meters per second. And the direction is up. All right, so it's a vector. We have to include a direction. The direction is up. All right, now there's a little bit of an issue here. So with this rocket, is it always going on 1,040 meters per second in real life if it's a real life rocket? No, so what's its initial velocity when it leaves the, the launch pad? What does it start at? Yeah, sorry, too fast. What's the initial velocity of that rocket? Right, zero. So the rocket isn't always going that fast. My goodness. Apparently, the sensitivity degrades over time. It needs like to rest or something. All right, so the rocket isn't always going that fast. In fact, initially, v naught is zero, and then towards the end of the rocket flight, it's moving way faster than 1,040 meters per second. All right, so there's a difference here. What we've calculated is the average velocity, but if I were to take a look at a snapshot in time when that rocket's moving, I'm going to get a vastly different number. 
And so that's, how, that's the difference between the average velocity and the instantaneous velocity. And the instantaneous velocity then you can calculate in much the same way that you do the average velocity. Delta x divided by delta t, but you have to do one thing first, or second, I guess. And you have to take the limit of when delta t goes to 0, when delta t becomes very, very, very small. All right. Now, if you've not taken a calculus course, you may not have seen any language like this. But all this means is that delta t is, is getting very, very small. And as delta t gets very, very small, then the velocity that we're calculating is much more representative of what that thing's doing at that precise instant in time. Right? And you can imagine that you can take an average velocity of only part of the flight. You could say, oh, well, what's the average velocity for the first half of the flight? And that might be a little bit different than the average velocity over the first quarter of the flight. And as you start to chunkify that time interval more and more, what you get is a, an approximation that's closer and closer to the instantaneous velocity. Now, the instantaneous velocity of the rocket is changing throughout the flight. If I were allowed to write this in a different way, which I'm not, I would write this oops, that button, like so. Um, I'd write it like this. And this is how we do things in calculus and uh, calculus-based physics. The velocity is equal to the time derivative of the position. All right, so dx divided by dt. You won't see that anymore aside from that, but just so you know that if you're taking the calculus version, it's not all that much more complicated. We just have a d instead of a delta. All right, so that's the difference between the instantaneous velocity and the, instant and the average velocity. In general, we're going to be de dealing with average velocities, but from time to time, we'll, we'll mention the instantaneous velocity, such as we will in a few minutes when we talk about interpreting velocity um, uh, graphically.